hello everybody. I'm going to, uh, if you, unless you've been living under a rock for the last uh, six months, you already know what uh, MANA do. Uh, we do delivery, short range delivery by drone of everything imaginable and mostly food. Um, I'm the founder and CEO of the business and I'm going to just take you through the next 15 minutes what the business is about, what the industry is about that we're serving, and then I'm very happy to answer all your detailed questions. Uh, it's as crazy a business as you could imagine, um, drones, flying hamburgers, but it is uh, without a doubt the future of short range delivery. And uh, look, I'll tell the story quickly and then take your questions, there'll be a ton of them that those are. So drone delivery is, is really a tale of two stories. Um, it's very much, you know, the, the drone industry and the online food industry together. Um, there's two gigantic industries, uh, both new and both growing. Um, and so in terms of the drone industry, uh, it, it's really interesting. The, the numbers, just, just to put it in perspective relative to general aviation, um, just 4.3% of uh, UK GDP um, is derived from aviation. So there's 8,300 aircraft in the skies in Europe at any one time, uh, and that's serving 11 million flights a year, or, or 37,000 a day. When you compare that with drones, uh, you know, the numbers are far higher. So drones will, will I'm sorry that's clipped there, but drones will get to about 1.9% uh, of GDP, according to uh, PwC will create 630,000 jobs just in the UK economy alone. And, and again, in the UK alone, it will be 76,000 aircraft traveling 500 million flights a year to 2 million flights at peak. So in terms of numbers and scale, <clears throat> the drone as an aviation business will be far, far higher volume than anything the aviation industry has seen. And that in itself presents a lot of very complex uh, governance, governmental and technical challenges that have to be solved ahead of uh, regulatory processes and frameworks and, and just general progress. And there's been some great news, uh, you know, in our space of late. And um, UPS uh, have recently received a Part 135 license, which is essentially an airline, a drone airline license that allows them to fly at will anywhere they want in the United States. Uh, problem is they don't have an aircraft uh, to do that, um, like a lot of people. Um, so that's that's the drone delivery industry. It is nascent. Uh, it's very interesting. It's very difficult, and uh, there are signs, early signs of of commercialization of it. If I compare that then to the other side of you know, Mana's world, you have the online food delivery platform. So you have um, all the big guys. Uh, it's a $350 billion industry. It's growing like crazy, uh, but it's not profitable. It's very, very difficult to do what Uber Eats or Just Eat or any of those guys do and to make a reasonable profit. And the reason that is, as you can imagine, is that these platforms have to hire uh, delivery drivers and cyclists to perform their duties. It's a very dangerous industry. 180 food delivery cyclists and bikers were carried by ambulance with critical injuries to hospital last year just in the Netherlands. Uh, 70 were killed in Cape Town delivering food for delivery platforms. So it's not a particularly nice industry. It's not green. There's cars that are used. It's dangerous and it's unprofitable. And on the consumer side, you know, you have 60% of consumers are getting their food in 28 minutes or less, and the rest is taking more than 28 minutes. And 60%, same number, will defer ordering food or will defer purchasing online with delivery if they can't be guaranteed that delivery within 28 minutes. So the industry is very highly constrained by simply not being able to serve the, the consumer. And when you look at that in numbers, you only have to look at the online reviews of these platforms to see that actually users are extremely unhappy with the product. And despite the fact that consumers are unhappy with the product, platforms still cannot make money. The average delivery driver or cyclist makes 2.2 deliveries an hour, and the average salary that they're paid is five euros per delivery. So in the context of a basket value of 15 or $20, 30% or 40% commissions are normal to restaurants just to recoup the cost of the delivery cyclists or drivers. So as a consequence of that, 
everybody's empty pocketed. The restaurants don't make money, the food platforms don't make money, and uh, the whole industry, while it's growing and much appreciated by its consumers, doesn't make any money. That's why we created MANA. Um, MANA is a very simple concept. We're a delivery company, that's how we see ourselves. We promise to deliver food or any other convenience store, over the shelf, pharmacy, etc within three minutes from the restaurant to your house. We fly at 80 kilometers per hour in a straight line as the crow flies. We can carry two to three kilos, which is about two chicken chow mains with rices, for those that don't know, or six or seven uh, double cheeseburgers with fries from McDonald's if you need that. And so it's very practical. It's, it'll serve 80 to 90% of demand. And as I said, reduce delivery time from 30 to 40, 50 minutes even, to less than three minutes. And we, that all works now. The process here, this is the interesting part. So, you know, to summarize, you order your food with your existing food ordering app. We have an agreement with Just Eat. Uh, Just Eat, you know, you order as you normally would, your cameo tire, whatever it is, um, that food will be produced by the restaurant. Our drones will be at the restaurant. And the food gets loaded inside the aircraft uh, and it flies to your location. When it arrives, you get a notification to say, we've arrived, please look up and please accept delivery. And when you then accept delivery, the aircraft descends to about 10 to 15 meters. It hovers there, the doors open up and the food is lowered down to the ground using LIDAR on a biodegradable linen thread. So the food is left on the ground in, the, in its packaging. It's, it's as spectacular an experience as it is practical. Um, everybody that sees this realizes pretty quickly that this is the future of short range delivery. And in terms of milestones, our business is early. We're, we founded in 2018. Um, we've done a great job so far. We've built the hardware that I'm about to show you. And we were due to go live, many of you will know this, uh, two weeks ago in, in Dublin, uh, which we had to postpone due to COVID. And nevertheless, we, you'll have seen in the news today, we're going to go live in Moneygall next week, delivering uh, pharmacy and food to the residents of Moneygall in the lockdown scenario. And then we'll be live in the USA. Well, pre-COVID anyway, plans would have been second half of this year, all to be reviewed. And do a little bit of on, our, on our finances, we're VC backed. We've raised just over $5 million to power the business from uh, these lovely VCs that have given us all this money. Uh, two US VCs have led that and they're followed by some Irish based um, finance funds as well, or venture capital funds, should I say. Uh, a little bit for, for the nerds. Uh, this is a, kind of comms architecture of how the aircraft works. Um, it, essentially, what the aircraft is about, I mean, your, your everyday DJI or unique drone or whatever it is you choose to use would not be valid for this type of uh, business. So what's what's difficult about building a business like this is there's, there's one part of it, which is software, which is, you know, actually quite easy or, or at least predictable. Then there's hardware, which is a little bit more difficult. Robotics is a little bit more complex and it's a different skill set. Uh, the hardware flies, which which is an added complication and and even worse is the hardware must fly reliably such that you have you have 10 to the minus eight of failure, catastrophic failures per operational hour, which is an exceptionally difficult uh, safety case to meet. So the result is that the, the design of the aircraft is quite a simple one um, intentionally simple and low ambition in terms of flight envelope and, and capabilities, but extremely safe. So on board there, we have three flight computers, any of which can fly the aircraft. We have four redundant communications links. So, and we only need one of them for the aircraft to be able to communicate to base. And we have uh, eight motors. We can fly on four motors. We have eight sets of propellers. We can fly on only four sets of propellers. We have just redundancy, redundancy, redundancy. And it's easy to build an aircraft It's very, very difficult to make it safe. And that's kind of what that, you know, that's the hardest part of this business. And that's the part that we've solved now when we're ready to fly. We're not ready to scale up or manufacture, but we're certainly ready to fly. And we, as I said, we'll do that. You'll all be able to see it in Money Gold next week. Um, if you were allowed out of your houses, um, 
we have exceptional permission from the HSE to conduct this uh, and from the IAA and we're looking forward to doing that so you see that that diagram there I'm showing you is simply you know a rough idea of how things work there's actually an android device on the aircraft that the restaurant scans a barcode that's printed out with the order and that give that essentially gives the aircraft you know knowledge of its mission the aircraft contacts our cloud services which then gets the the flight plan and the route map for that so gps points altitude all that kind of stuff and once the button is pressed, that's it, the operator stands back and the aircraft is fully autonomous from that point on. So the aircraft will uh, just take off, fly, deliver and come home and, and nobody can interfere with it. It's Everything's encrypted, everything's um, unhackable, in, at least hopefully, uh, and that's the process. So 